earlier in the lives of our children, we inculcate them with the beautiful ways of this deen. And gradually, why, especially some sort of music, is wrong. And when we teach them that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes something haram, especially when they are teenagers, that he makes things haram not because it is like a tyrannical order, but he makes things haram for our own good and because they are harmful to us. Now, this is my approach to the situation. Do you know what kind of people they are? You know what kind of people they are. Are these people that as a Muslim you want to emulate in your life? Wallahi, even at a time when perhaps many have not come to this country and used to listen to music, even at one point soft rock, hmm? soft rock with good lyrics. I can tell you a few of those names. And then after a while, you see that the people who sing those words never live by them. Those beautiful words sometimes, they're poetic, beautiful words. They never live by them. Their lives are known, 99% of them to be lives of what? Promiscuity, sexual promiscuity. Absence most of the time in, in divine consciousness. And these become therefore models in our lives. Do we want to have those people as model? And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we gave up something for him. Wallahi al-Azim. Wallahi al-Azim. Wallahi al-Azim. When we give up something for Allah, Allah replaces that thing with something better for us. And I'm going to give you examples. If you, some people naturally, by the way, when Allah, as our ulama, Jumhurul ulama have said, that musical instruments to play them and to listen to them is usually haram, under regular circumstances, they say, هذا ليس حرام لذاته وإنما حرام ذريع, حرام تحريم ذريع. What does this mean? This means that beautiful sounds, musical sounds, are not wrong in themselves. But what they may lead to, it is haram tahrim adhari'ah, what they may lead to or usually lead to. Until I came to this country much later on, I realized now that they have professional tapes of natural sounds. Beautiful, very, very beautiful. You can enjoy them, it is halal enjoyment. And at the same time, they inspire in you the desire for dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You give up something for Allah, Allah will give you in exchange something else that others don't have. This is as briefly as I can be on this question, Allah ta'ala. Ta To music, can be or can be not? Well, let's uh, get that well, question answered. Whether music or art in general, all these issues, unfortunately, uh, for, for, for some time now, specifically last 20, 25 years, a uh, lot of books have been important uh, from specific countries. Within specific context, they were written uh, as a reaction to a certain kind of uh, or certain phenomena. Uh, and then everything is haram. You cannot apply that because you have to have a proof. God Almighty says in chapter 16, do not say with your tongues and out loud that this is halal and haram. And you are lying on behalf of God. So is there a clear-cut verse forbidden art and music? I want to see a clear-cut meaning says it is not permissible to play music. Of and course, is there such? There is no such thing. The hadith which is in Sahih Bukhari, it's not in the Bukhari a, a compilation of authentic. It's in the Bukhari, but as you can say, an appendix called Mu'allaqat, hanged hadith, meaning we lack a person there to be confirmed 
there is a, a, a cut there. There's no link between that and the Prophet himself. So you're you saying Where, that the Prophet may not have said this? Most likely he hasn't said it. And also, common sense again. What kind of music are we talking about? There is the good music and the bad music. Like there is the good medicine and the bad medicine. There is a good food and the bad food. I personally, I don't spend time listening to music. I don't have time. But to say bluntly, it is haram. Prophet suggested to Aisha and to many people who celebrated weddings to say things. Even gave them the lyrics. Why don't you sing something like, we have come, we have come. In the, the, the song about marriage. Make a wedding, a wedding and not a funeral. It's about celebration. Eid, celebration, children, singing, laughing. There were those two girls... You know, some say uh, in the hadith that they were very young. Not really, they were not. And that uh, Abu Bakr was upset with them. May Allah be pleased with him. And then the Prophet said, no, let them sing. Let them enjoy the moment. It's a wedding, it's celebration. So as a music, to say bluntly, there are four opinions, basically. I know because of the time. Yeah, there is question would have to be very brief. Yeah, we only the, have about yeah, a and, and and half a minute. For there are, say, no, categorically harm. Some say, no, we can use the good and forsake the bad and there is another one says we allow everything and there is of course the fourth one of, of course that we can use only tambourine instead of this and that but we have to be very careful uh, to say something yes there are many hadiths let me uh, just uh, tell you Ibn al-Arabi and many great scholars of jurisprudence have confirmed that all these hadiths are weak and they don't stand a chance and and we sometimes uh, blow something out of proportion and make it a big issue. We know by common sense the bad words, the bad music, which leads away, uh, leads people away from God and and family values and and good things. And we know the music that is enhancing these values. Nothing wrong with that. And Allah okay. knows best. Okay, folks, that's about all the time we have for this segment as well. Uh and green It is your light that we need You came to teach us how to live Muhammad Ya Rasulullah You were so caring and kind Your soul was full of light You are the best of mankind Muhammad Khairu Smack that all on the floor, smack that till you get sore, smack that till you get sore, smack that, oh, smack that, oh, smack that, smack that, I want some more, smack that. Could she be that lady? Hey, I feel you creeping, I can see it from my shadow. Wanna jump up in my Lamborghini Gallardo? Maybe go to my place and just kick it like Tybo. Impossibly being your own. أنا أقول لكم قصة شاب اسمعوا يا شباب الأمة والله الذي لا إله إلا هو إن هذه القصة كما أحدثكم وإني على يقين وحدثني بها عدول 
ومن سمعها ورآها وشاهدها قبل أيام أو قبل أشهر تأتي الموافقة على على إكمال طريق أبها الحجاز مرورا مرورا ببلحمر وتنومه والنماص بلسمر حتى وصلت الشركة المنفذة للمشروع إلى منطقة يقال لها شمران وصلوا إلى هذه المنطقة وهذه القرية فأوقف سير هذه الشركة مقبرة قديمة مقبرة قديمة أوقفت إتمام هذا الطريق ذهبت تلك الشركة إلى المحكمة في شمران ثم قدموا عليهم استدعاء يستفتونهم في شأن هذه المقبرة التي وقفت في إتمام الطريق أحبة الكرام صدرت الفتوى من هيئة كبار العلماء بتغيير أماكن هذه القبور شكلوا لجنة أحبة الكرام آخر من دفن في هذه المقبرة قبل ثلاثين سنة بالله يا أخوان بالله تعالى وذهب إلى صلاة الفجر والله ما تعبني في قضية الصلاة محافظ على صلاته علشان كذا في قبرة ثلاثين سنة ما تغير والله ما نسعد إلا بغير الله لا لا إلا غالي لن نسعد إلا بالطاعة إلا بالعبادة إلا بالقرب إلا بالقرب من الله أسأل الله أن يجعل قلوب معلقة بقول آمين are getting dull you need 10% to make you feel that it's alcohol something to give you a kick then you need 20% to make you to feel that there's something potency in it you have to increase the alcoholic content to make you feel that it's better than the previous one is better than the previous one if you give such a man grape juice he says it's mud water what is it insipid no taste <laughs> and he's telling us in his book called alcohol this is one of the he's telling us and I have no reason to contradict him unless you have. He said there are 11 million drunkards in America. 11 million drunkards. And 44 million heavy drinkers. Get that book, small book. I have a sample here, I think. Alcohol. 11 million drunkards and 44 million heavy drinkers. And he says to me there's no difference between the two. It means 55 million drunkards as far as Jimmy Swaggart is concerned. In my country, they don't call them drunkards. It's an insult. The guy can punch you on the jaw if you call a man a drunkard. You have to call him alcoholic. <laughs> you know, the poor man is sick. It's a sickness in his treatment. It's not a sin. Alcohol is not a sin. It's a sickness. Jimmy Swaggart calls a spade a spade. He said drunkards. 55 million drunkards in America. 11 million drunkards and heavy drinkers. I said, I make no difference. I said, yes, brother. I said, go a step further. Islam will take you a step further. He said, even your social drinkers are on the same level. They're breaking the laws and commandments of God as given in the last and final revelation of God. The Holy Prophet Muhammad, he said, whatever intoxicates in greater quantity is forbidden even in smaller quantity. No excuse for a nip or a tot. The Holy Quran says, Ya ayyuhal lazina amanu, O you who believe, innam al khamru, most certainly intoxicants, wal maisiru, and gambling, wal ansabu, and fortune telling, wal aslamu, and idol worship, rizum minam al shaitan, are an abomination of Satan's handiwork, fachtanibuhu la'allakum tuflihun. It's a shun such abomination that you may prosper. And one pronouncement, he created the biggest society of teetotalists in the world. 1,000 million Muslims, as a people, as a whole, they don't imbibe that filth. We have our black sheep. We are not all angels. We know some Muslims can bring the Christian under the table. That you know. We are ashamed of them. But as a people, as a whole, the biggest society of teetotalists, people who don't imbibe, are the Muslims. And what did it? This word of God. This is a miracle. You perform a million miracles and you can't change people. Here, without any miracles, he transformed nations. This is a miracle. What miracle are you talking about? So, the Quranic first miracle of Jesus, he spoke and defended his mother against an unbelieving audience. The first miracle of Jesus, he turned water into wine. Since then, wine has flowed like water in Christendom. And there's no way out. The preachers, Jimmy Swaggart is telling us, there's a book called Preachers. 
And he's telling us in that book, he said at a church conference, all these preachers, the evangelists, the hot gospelers, the Bible thumpers, you know what they call them evangelists? Born again Christians? Yes, at a conference, we asked, somebody suggested this, look, those people who are against the, the, the against alcohol, please stand up, that you can go out when you return, preach in your churches against the evil of alcohol. Please stand up. And Jimmy Swaggart says, nobody stood up. That means they all opted for alcohol. Why? And the reason, Jimmy Swaggart said, the reasoning is, he said, look, our Lord Jesus turned water into wine. If it is good enough for our God, it's good for us. Good logic. If it's good for your God, it's good for you. He says, that was pure grape juice. I said, it is the same W-I-N-E wine, your Christian scholar says. W-I-N-E wine in Greek as the Lot, the prophet Lot, according to the Bible. He drank and cohibited with his daughters. Committed incest night after night. Same W-I-N-E wine in Greek, that W-I-N-E wine and this W-I-N-E wine. I said, the only way out is, here, yeah, the last and final revelation of God. Jesus Christ tells you that I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. You haven't got that capacity. You're not fit to receive. Solution to all the problems that I can give you. I Example of what I've been talking about. Since this boy was suckling on his mama's tit, he's been given everything but discipline. And now his idea of courage and manhood is to get together with a bunch of punk friends and ride around irritating folks too good natured to put a stop to it. <laughs> hey, who do you think you are, huh? Just dumb kid, huh? Don't kill him. Hug McCann. I fought in two world wars and countless smaller ones on three continents. I led thousands of men into battle with everything from horses and swords to artillery and tanks. I've seen the headwaters of the Nile and tribes the natives no white man had ever seen before. I've won and lost a dozen fortunes, killed many men, and loved only one woman with a passion a flea like you could never begin to understand. That's who I am. Now go home, boy. Show these old bastards who's tough. Get out your knife. Yeah. Now, boys, you're fixing to let those teenage hormones get you into world of trouble. Damn it, Garth. Did I ask you to butt in? Well, you just come out of the hospital. Well, hey, there's, uh, there's only four of them. Yeah, but, well, look, look, you fight this one first, yeah. and then I'll let you fight the other three after, okay? Yeah. Okay. Watch this, kid. Now, you. You better pick that knife up, because, son, <laughs> you're going to need all the help you can get. <laughs> Come on, Frankie. Get him, Frankie. Cut him, Frankie. Get, get him, Frankie. Frankie. Get, him. get him, Frankie. Cut him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, get him. Shoot. Hold his trick in the book. Oh, okay. Oh. You're holding it wrong, son. Not like this. You always do it like this. Smooth. All right? Try it again. Come on, Frankie. Come on, Frankie. Get him. Three you better get in there and help. Always hogs the bad guy. He's selfish that way. But there's four of them.
this year? Nah. After 40 years, I'm used to it. Besides, right now, I figure he needs some worse than I do.